Good evening, my name is Curtis, and I'm getting prepared to go on an 8,800 kilometer round trip across the country on this 31 year old motorcycle, solo. So, I'm getting the bike ready, doing some things to it, and I'm going to keep you updated on my journey. Okay, thank you. Okay, so here's the bike. It is a 1987 Suzuki Intruder 1400, and uh, I bought it just before Christmas. I got about 2,000 kilometers on it now. Uh, I was running like garbage when I bought it. It was setting for a long time. I just had to clean the carbs a couple of times. The original fuel tank was all rotted out in the inside, so I got this newer tank off of uh, 92. Uh, I don't like the look of it as much as the old school tank, but whatever. And then uh, the fuel pump didn't seem to be working right either, so I put one of these uh, Mr. Mr. Gasket 42S pumps on it for now, and it seems to be working better. Uh, here's a bit of the start of my uh, luggage rack sissy bar thing that I'm building. And I got these uh, cheap saddlebags on clearance sale at Canadian Tire. They're actually for a snowmobile, but I think they're going to work out alright. I just started my rack, so uh, yeah, I think I'm going to load up some stuff and uh, head on out to my welding shop and uh, get the sissy bar going. Okay, see you later. Okay, a little update here. I have a, uh, this is kind of mimics the factory backrest and then the factory toolkit and back pad will re-go on this. And those are the standoffs for the saddlebags and that's all welded out. And then it's a quick sneak peek of starting on the sissy bar. It's going to be pretty cool. And there still is the back rack to get mounted on too. So uh, right on. I'll get back to you. All right, getting about 11 o'clock at night here. But uh, we got her welded out. There's the sissy bar. It doesn't really show, but it's supposed to be off crooked on purpose. It looks better in real life, but maybe you'll see after it's on the bike. And. Uh, There you go. It's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe when I get home I'll test it on the bike and then call her a night. Okay, here it is mocked up. It uh, went on pretty good. It's kind of hard to get the bolts to line up. But, uh, you see the rack? And I relocated the tail lights to back here. Just because if I put them up here and I put something on the back, you could cover them up. So it's the only real good spot. I think of putting them, that was easy. But, there she is. Oh, that always looks crap. It looks way better in real life. But anyways. There's it with the bag. There it is. Um, I'm gonna drill holes in here, and there's snaps that come around and snap the bags on. So there's that. It even doesn't look too bad without the bags, really. So right on. Fucking good. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Bye. All right. Well, a lot has happened since. Uh, Last time you see me, I had to, it's about a week and a half later, I had to take some time off for work commitments, but as you can see, there's been lots of changes. Here I put on a Spitfire windshield and installed this cool uh, charger port. And I got those bags on, that's my backpack. And this actually, full tour pack. I got it on sale at Canadian Tire for 150 bucks, so it's pretty sweet. So in here is just gas and oil and tools basically. And that's all my sleeping stuff. And then there's my bedroll, clothes, and then just rain pants and some other things. And this side here is pretty much just going to be for food. And uh, that's about it. So. 
bright and early tomorrow morning, I'm going to be on the highway. Pretty exciting stuff. All right, we'll check back later. Day two of my journey. I put down about 1,400 kilometers yesterday almost. Then just on the side of uh, Winnipeg. Uh, beautiful weather, everything's going good. I'm here in beautiful Kenora, Ontario. And uh, not much to report. We're, we're doing good. One thing I did not consider is how freaking dry and sunburnt and windburnt my face would get. My lips started bleeding, my gums are sore, but oh well, it's all in good fun. Right on, it's gonna be a good day. Alright, we're in northern BC here, or not BC, northern Ontario here. Fucking beautiful day. So I figured I might as well stop, take a rest, and talk to you about my trip a bit. So, yesterday morning I, I got up about 3 and I took off about 4 in the morning. And got off to a good start. But about 60 kilometers in, it was about 5.30 in the morning. I decided to stop from get for some gas, and I don't know if I was, uh... I don't know if I was, uh, just tired, or wasn't used to all the top-heavy weight on my bike, but when I pulled up to the pump, put my kickstand down, apparently I was still rolling ahead a, a bit, and I dropped the bike, and it fell right over. Luckily, the top of the sissy bar here hit a fire extinguisher box, so that broke the fall a bit, but the foot peg got bent a bit. So I just kicked it down, and I was like, oh well, that's good enough. So I kept going, and later on down the road, I went to stop, and I went to put my foot down, and uh, I don't know if you can see here, but uh, there's no foot peg. She's gone. So, as I'm coming out this trip, missing one foot peg, I can kind of put my foot on that nub there. It's okay, I'm mostly right on the highway peg, but besides that, yeah, it's not too bad. So I went about almost 1,400 kilometers yesterday. Stopped at a little campground just past Winnipeg. Uh, the old guy there that worked there, he let me just, uh, set up my tarp outside the gate for 10 bucks. So that wasn't bad, I guess. And today, yeah, I'm just I'm just cooking through. So uh, good enough. I'll get back to you. So since my camera work sucks, seriously, uh, ah, there's the missing foot peg right there. So I can kind of put my foot on there and it kind of falls off. But I kind of put my foot there and then across on the kickstand when it's up. And I roll with that, but I mostly use the highway pegs anyway, so it's all right. Um, the old bike's running pretty decent. It's sputtered out a few times on me along the way, but I don't know. As long as she keeps going, I guess she's not too bad. Um, I got... 14 liters of extra gas in the back, so it's pretty heavy, but I had to use it once already. I might need to use it soon again, because the tank only holds a little over three gallons, so... Uh, I can't go too far on a tank. Man, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> the old 1986 intruder. What a machine. <laughs> okay. Hello. Well, I was driving along the road and I was thinking, I have some advice for you guys that I wish I'd given myself years ago. And it's that, um, I've always wanted, I've always been intrigued with 
traveling long distance on a, on a motorcycle. I've always had dirt bikes and snowmobiles. And, but, you know, as I was under the impression if you're buying a cruiser motorcycle, it had to be a Harley. If it wasn't a Harley, it was crap. So I'm like, oh man, someday I'm going to get a Harley. It's just with life and different things going on and every other hobbies, it, uh, you know, it was never possible for me. So then, after over 10 years of wanting a bike and wanting to hit the road, I said, F it. I went out, I spent a thousand bucks on this 87 Intruder, which I think is pretty cool. And I've been driving the hell of it all summer and loving it. And asked myself, why didn't I do this sooner? So just because you want to do something in life, don't, don't not do it because you, you're going to be embarrassed of not having the best equipment or what everyone thinks is cool. Just buy what works and what you can afford and just run it. And uh, that's kind of the best advice I could give to you ever. It's uh, better to be out there doing something than sitting home doing nothing, right? And uh, the other thing is if you have a bike or you're thinking about getting a bike and you want to take a long trip, like, just do it, man. It's I'm having so much fun. It's a blast. And I have a lot of years of catching up to do on trips that I wish I would have taken and I wish I had a bike. So um, I think, you know, I'm going to pretty much be living on this bike. It'll be, I'm going to be taking trips as much as I can. It's just, it's just fantastic. So, uh, yeah, you know, I took this trip twice before in vehicles and it sucked. Like, you're just trying to get to where you're going and it's just a long drive and you got to stop and look at stuff, to, you know kind of enjoy the journey but I find on the bike just just riding the bike is fun like I get enough pleasure of just riding the bike I just want to put as many miles on as I can camp for a few hours at night and just keep going I'm just loving it and it's on a 1986 or 1987 thousand dollar motorcycle and it's great so you don't need a Harley you don't need a $10,000, 20, dollars $30,000 motorcycle. Get something for a couple thousand bucks that's reliable. Just get out there and get it. And if you love it and if you're passionate about it enough and you really want that fancy bike, you'll eventually do what it takes to get there. But until then, man, just get out there and, and enjoy. Husky uh, restaurant here, truck stop. And uh, man, I am feeling squirrely. I think it's between lack of sleep and lack of food and exposure to the sun. You see, my face is just burnt to a crisp from the sun and the wind. And my lips are were bleeding earlier. My gums are bleeding. So anyways, it's all good. We're over halfway down the trip here. Uh, I'm already past the schedule point um, of where I'm supposed to be for today. Uh, I was planning on getting farther. I think I'm going to get some more hours in. It's only about 5.30 now, so I'm going to go in to the restaurant, have something to eat, hang out, and just relax for a get, bit and get my head back straight here. <laughs> Man, I was, I don't think I was even safe to be on the road there towards the end. Oh, what? You know what? It's a beautiful day and I'm having fun and it's all good. <laughs> 